This is the Wikipedia page for sexual cannibalism. Welcome to Wikilisten, the podcast where we read Wikipedia pages and provide commentary. I am Victor Vernado, KSN. And I am Rachel Teichman, LMSW. I found this page because I was curious if there is a name for when a praying mantis woman bites off the head of a praying mantis man. I guess, you know, they're not necessarily women and men, but you get what I'm saying. That Uh, is quite a question to have. There's a whole thing. It's called sexual cannibalism. Let's get to it, everybody. Sexual cannibalism. Sexual cannibalism is when an animal, usually the female, cannibalizes the mate prior to, during, or after copulation. It is a trait observed in many arachnid orders and several insect orders. Several hypotheses to explain this seemingly paradoxical behavior have been proposed. The adaptive foraging hypothesis, aggressive spillover hypothesis, and mistaken identity hypothesis are the proposed hypotheses to explain how sexual cannibalism evolved. This behavior is believed to have evolved as a manifestation of sexual conflict, occurring when the reproductive interests of males and females differ. In many species that exhibit sexual cannibalism, the female consumes the male upon detection. Females of cannibalistic species are generally hostile and unwilling to mate. Thus, many males of these species have developed adaptive behaviors to counteract female aggression. Oh no. We'll see what the we'll see what this means. I feel like this is going to be a roller coaster. It already is. Prevalence. Sexual cannibalism is common among insects, arachnids, and amphipods. There is also evidence of sexual cannibalism in gastropods and copepods. Sexual cannibalism is common among species with prominent sexual size dimorphism (SSD). Extreme SSD likely drives this trait of sexual cannibalism in spiders. Male sexual cannibalism. Although females often instigate sexual cannibalism, reversed sexual cannibalism has been observed in the spiders Macaria sociabilis and Alacosa brasiliensis. In a laboratory experiment on M, sociabilis males preferred to eat older females. This behavior may have been interpreted as adaptive foraging because older females now have low reproductive potential and food may be limited. Reversed cannibalism in M. sociabilis may also be influenced by size dimorphism. Males and females are similar sizes, and bigger males were more likely to be cannibalistic. In a Brazilian cyst, males tend to be cannibalistic in between mating seasons. After they have mated, gone out of their burrows to search for food, and left their mates in their burrow. Any females they cross during this period are likely to have little reproductive value, so this may also be interpreted as adaptive foraging. Proposed Explanations Different hypotheses have been proposed to explain sexual cannibalism, namely adaptive foraging, aggressive spillover, mate choice, and mistaken identity. Adaptive Foraging the, the adaptive foraging hypothesis is a proposed precopulatory explanation in which females assess the nutritional value of a male compared to the male's value as a mate. <laughs> Starving females are usually in poor physical condition and are therefore more likely to cannibalize a male than to mate with him. Among mantises, cannibalism by female Pseudomantis albofimbriata improves fecundity, overall growth, and body condition. A study on the Chinese mantis found that cannibalism occurred in up to 50% of matings. Among spiders, Dolomites trident females in need of additional energy and nutrients for egg development choose to consume the closest nutritional source, even if this means cannibalizing a potential mate. In Egalanopus pensylvanica and Lycosis tarantula, a significant increase in fecundity, egg case size, hatching success, and survivorship of offspring has been observed when hungry females choose to cannibalize smaller mates before copulating with larger genetically superior males. This reproductive success was largely due to the increased energy uptake by cannibalizing males and investing that additional energy in the development of larger, higher quality egg cases. 
In D. Triton post copulatory, sexual cannibalism was observed in the females that had a limited food source. These females copulated with the males and then cannibalized them. So don't be a small bug. Be a big bug or they'll eat you. The adaptive foraging hypothesis has been criticized because males are considered poor meals when compared to crickets. However, recent findings discovered Hogna Helu males have nutrients crickets lack, including various proteins and lipids. In H. Heluo, females have a higher protein diet when cannibalizing males than when consuming only house crickets. Further studies show that Argeopkeserlingi females with high protein, low lipid diets resulting from sexual cannibalism may produce eggs of greater egg energy density, yolk investment. Aggressive spillover. The aggressive spillover hypothesis suggests that the more aggressive a female is concerning prey, the more likely the female is to cannibalize a potential mate. The decision of a female to cannibalize a male is not defined by the nutritional value or genetic advantage, courtship dances, male aggressiveness, and large body size of males, but instead depends strictly on her aggressive state. Aggression of the female is measured by latency, speed of attack on prey. The faster the speed of attack and consumption of prey, the higher the aggressiveness levels. Females displaying aggressive characteristics tend to grow larger than other females and display continuous cannibalistic behavior. Such behavior may drive away potential mates, reducing chances of mating. Aggressive behavior is less common in an environment that is female biased because there is more competition to mate with the male. In these female dominated environments, such aggressive behavior comes with the risk of scaring away potential mates. Males of the Pisora mirabilis species feign death to avoid being cannibalized by a female prior to copulation. When males feign death, their success in reproduction depends on the level of aggressiveness the female displays. Research has shown that in the Nephalangus levita species, female aggressiveness had no effect on the likelihood of her cannibalizing a potential mate. Male aggressiveness and male-male competition determined which male the female cannibalized. Males with aggressive characteristics were favored and had a higher chance of mating with the female. Mate choice. Females exercise mate choice, rejecting unwanted and unfit males by cannibalizing them. <laughs> Would you imagine if you like ask a girl to dance at a bar and then she's like, well, no, and I'm going to eat you now. Uh, that sounds like some good Darwinism. <laughs> Is it? You just ask and you get eaten? Mate choice often correlates size with fitness level. Smaller males tend to be less aggressive and display a low level of fitness. Smaller males are therefore eaten more often because of their undesirable traits. <laughs> males perform elaborate courtship dances to display fitness and genetic advantage. Female orb web spiders, Nephalingus levita, tend to cannibalize males displaying less aggressive behavior and mate with males displaying more aggressive behavior, showing a preference for this trait, which along with large body size that indicates a strong foraging ability, displays high male quality and genetic advantage. Not enough is said about strong foraging ability these days. My foraging ability is off the charts. I bet. Indirect mate choice can be witnessed in fishing spiders, Dolomates fimbriatus, where females do not discriminate against smaller body size, attacking males of all sizes. <laughs> all right, way to go. <laughs> Good job. Females had lower success rates cannibalizing large males, which managed to escape where smaller males could not. Oh. There it is. <laughs> It was shown that males with desirable traits, large body size, high aggression, and long courtship dances had longer copulation duration than males with undesirable traits. Okay, but is that a good thing? I don't know. In A. Kieserlingi and Nephila edulis, females allow longer copulation duration and a second copulation for smaller males. <laughs> nice. The gravity hypothesis suggests that some species of spiders may favor smaller body sizes because they enable them to climb up plants more efficiently and find a mate faster. 
Also, smaller males may be favored because they hatch and mature faster, giving them a direct advantage in finding and mating with a female. In Lukauge Mariana, females will cannibalize males if their sexual performance was poor. Whoa! <laughs> that's great. That's pretty funny. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. They use palpal inflations to determine sperm count. And if the female deems sperm count too low, she will consume the male. <laughs> In Latrodectus revivensis, revivensis, females tend to limit copulation duration for small males and deny them a second copulation, showing preference for larger body size. Another form of mate choice is the genetic bet hedging hypothesis in which a female consumes males to prevent them from exploiting her. It is not beneficial for a female exploited by multiple males because it may result in prey theft, reduction in web, and reduced time of foraging. Sexual cannibalism might have promoted the evolution of some behavioral and morphological traits exhibited by spiders today. Mistaken identity. The mistaken identity hypothesis suggests that sexual cannibalism occurs when females fail to identify males that try to court. This hypothesis suggests that a cannibalistic female attacks and consumes the male without the knowledge of mate quality. In pre-copulatory sexual cannibalism, mistaken identity can be seen when a female does not allow the male to perform the courtship dance and engages in attack. There is no conclusive evidence for this hypothesis because scientists struggled to distinguish between mistaken identity and the other hypothesis, aggressive spillover, adaptive foraging, and mate choice. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot going on there. But basically what we're saying is in the uh, insect and spider world, I guess don't be a book learning dude. Be a husky guy. Otherwise you'll get eaten. <laughs> And you better be able to dance. Also perform well in bed or you will be eaten. These are some tall commands for some little spiders. This has been the Wikipedia page for sexual cannibalism, part one. If you'd like us to read a particular page, please let us know. Thanks for listening to Wikilisten. You can find us on all social media at Wikilisten, except for Twitter, which is wiki underscore listen, and at wikilisten.com. 